That's what we're talking about. We're talking about grace-based living. The name of this series is called Grace Unveiled. We're talking about Grace Unveiled because grace is a mystery of the kingdom. Grace is a mystery of the kingdom. Grace is a mystery of the kingdom. So when we say grace is a mystery, the Bible says it's been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. You have a right to know mysteries. And until you um, exercise that right, you won't know mysteries. You have a right to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It's been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. It's been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Unbelievers have no right to know mysteries. But as a Christian, you have the right to know mysteries. And you got to take advantage of that right. Because listen to me good. You'll never go further than your light. Listen to me good. You'll never go further than your light. You'll never go further. The Bible says, in him was life. And that life was the light of men. Listen to me good. Your life starts when you get understanding. Your life starts when you get revelation knowledge. Your life does not start to progress until you get revelation knowledge. You'll never go further than your light. And a lot of people, they walk in darkness, even though they're supposed to be lights of the world. That's not the goal. So I'm trying to push you to a place where you can walk in light because your life is in your light. What does that mean? Your life is hidden in revelation. You will only progress as deep in Jesus as your revelation knowledge. What's revelation knowledge? Revelation knowledge is knowledge that comes from the Holy Spirit that's, that's not revealed by the senses, but by it's revealed by the indwelling of the Spirit. The indwelling of the Spirit gives you access to what's called revelation knowledge, which means believers should live on a higher plane than the world because the world is limited to sense knowledge. What does that mean? It means that the world is dictated to by what they see, what they feel, what they think, and what they hear. As a believer, you're not limited to that lower creature passion, that lower level of living, but you actually are have been awakened or initiated into a life where you have access to understanding. You can understand the true nature of things. You have access to understanding, you have access to revelation. So you have revelation knowledge. You live by what God is revealing to you. This is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4. It says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Your life is hidden in the word that God is speaking to you. When God speaks, revelation comes. When you're listening to me now, don't, don't be caught up in my personality. Be caught up in the voice of God that's coming through me. When you're listening to me speak, I want you to listen for God. There's something that God has for you in this message that can change your life. There's something God has for you. And whatever God speaks to you in this message, that's what God wants you to apply to your life. And that's the secret to you pro progressing. Your progression is hidden in your revelation. Whatever God is revealing out of the message is what he wants to start to uh, initiate you into. I want you to be mindful. So we're talking about a grace-based life. Okay, grace-based living. Um, Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. And we're going to go to verse 5. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5. I want you to be, if you're still on here, Jekiah. If you're still on here, Jekiah, I want you to um be the, the designated uh, one that puts the scriptures up. That's if you can. Let me know if you can or not, Jekiah, if you're still on here. We're on Jeremiah chapter um, 17, verse 5. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. All right, watch what it says. It says, Thus saith the Lord. Cursed be the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and a salt land and not inhibit it. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. And that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat comes, but her leaves shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So this is a parallel. One is the life of grace. One is the life of works. Hey, how you doing? One is the life of grace. One is the life of works. The life of works is verse 5 and 6. Some of you are living a life of works. That's why you're not progressing. 
That's why you're always frustrated. That's why you're trying to figure out why things aren't happening for me. That's why you're trying to figure out why things aren't changing. Because you're trusting in, number one, you're trusting in people. See, in order for you to prosper in any area of life, the number one rule of prosperity is this, is that you have to, God has to be your source. One of the greatest confessions I ever came into a couple of years ago was God is the unfailing, unlimited source of my supply. God is the unfailing, unlimited source of my supply. And when I came into that awareness, it changed my life. I don't depend on people because God is the unfailing, unlimited source of my supply. If God never fails and he's unlimited, who else do I need to depend on as my source? We're not saying you don't need people, but I'm saying God is your source. People are channels or instruments that God used to bless you. But watch this. People are instruments or channels God used to bless you, but God is the source. So the first rule of grace is God has to be your source. You have to see God as the unfailing, unlimited source of your supply. If you don't see God as the unfil unfailing, unlimited source of your supply, you have no right to access grace. We're going to talk about how to access grace as well. But it says, Curse is the man that trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, whose heart departs from the Lord. Another key to why people don't live by grace is they trust in their flesh. What does that mean? They trust in their human ability. They trust in their skills. They trust in their giftedness. They, they trust in their education. They trust in their human associations. So because they make the flesh the source of their strength, because they make the flesh the source of their promotion, because they make the flesh the source of their progress, they won't go further than, than what they can do. See, in order for God to accelerate you, in order for God to prosper you, you have to be aware of your need of God. What's humility? Humility is an awareness of how helpless I am without God. Humility is the awareness of how helpless I am without God. If you feel like you can do it without God, you're not humble. If you feel like you can do it without God, you're not humble. Humility is a realization that I'm helpless without God. See, some of us, you know, we, we feel like we need God to read the Bible and we need God when times get hard. But besides reading the Bible and hard times, we can do it ourselves. And that's why you fail so much. Because you rely on yourself instead of Jesus, instead of God. See, in order for you to have a life of grace, you got to be humble. Humility is how you access grace. Humility is the key that opens the door to grace. Where you see pride, there's no grace. Where you see pride, there's no grace. Some of you, the reason you don't live a life of grace is a life of success or grace because you're too prideful. You depend on yourself and you depend on people. You trust in your education. You trust in your skin color. You trust in, in your intellect. You trust in your connections. You trust in everything but Jesus. So as long as you're trusting in everything but Jesus, you'll never be accelerated. You'll stay in that same position. Let, let me tell you how this life works. I'm, I'm going to give you a secret of life. If you guys want a secret to life, I want you to, to give me the ear emoji or, or say I'm listening. If you want a secret to life, this is a, this is a secret to life. This is something God taught me years ago. Uh, and, and, and I just went into a vision. I just went into a vision when I was about to say it. It's something that God taught me years ago. Some God taught me years ago. Listen to me good. Some of you um, are walking in circles. But when I went into a vision, when you're walking in circles, you're not walking in circles just the same way. When you're walking in circles, when you keep walking in circles, you go deeper and deeper under the dirt. You go deeper and deeper in depth. Watch this. The reason you're walking in circles, because you have not learned you need God. The reason you're walking in circles, you have not learned you need God. So when I went into that vision and I see people going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper as they walk in circles, listen to me good. The reason you're going deeper and deeper is because God has to let stuff get bad and worse and worse until you realize how much you need God. See, some people will never realize they need God until they hit rock bottom. And what's rock bottom for you may not be rock bottom for me. Rock bottom is different from it for everybody. So a lot of people, they're not going to change until they hit rock bottom. And when they hit rock bottom and they realize, they realize that that's rock bottom, that's when they'll change. But some people, they're still trying to cheat God. And they're still, you know, they come up with things they can do by themselves and things that, they can do by themselves and things that, that God can help them with. 
But God wants us to be so humble that we realize we need him for everything. I'm right about it. He wants us to realize that we need him for everything. And that's how you begin to access grace. You'll never have more grace than your humility level. You'll never have more grace than your humility level. Watch this. Okay. So the, the life of the life of works is a life where you trust in people, where you trust in your flesh, your own human ability. And watch this. When you this is this is a this is an equation, you know, and you know, um, you know, uh, in 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 algebra, you, we we have those equations, right? You know, just throwing out one: a plus b equals c. A plus b equals c. We're gonna use an equation: trusting in man plus making a flesh your arm equals a heart departing from the Lord. Trusting in man plus making a flesh your arm equals you departing from the Lord. So when you trust in man and you depend on your fleshly ability and things that come with the flesh, your heart departs from the Lord. And this is your experience. Verse six, you will be like a heath in the desert or a bush that's in the wilderness. And when good comes, you won't see it. You'll be blinded to good. And then also you will live in a place in the desert that never gets rain, a place that's 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 un, that's un, um, unfit to live in. And also a place that never gets sustenance and prosperity. So if we want to but experience acceleration in life, we all have to acknowledge that we need God. And you have to you have to live as if you're a child. See, if you want to go far in God, you got to be like a child. Some of you, your education and your intellect has puffed you up and you don't you don't approach God as being a child. You approach God as being an adult. See, no, you got to approach God as being a child. What does that mean? That means when you think about a child. Well, I, let, let's go back. If any of you are parents, let's say you had a, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, that child depends on you for everything. And when most time when children begin to talk about they don't need their father or they don't need their mother, that's when they're about to leave the house. That's when they're about to go and explore life on their own. That's, that's when they're about to go explore life on their own. And that's, that's when they're about to go do what they need to do. That's how a lot of us approach God. We, we live like we're old enough to leave out of our father's house with our many mansions. See, let me tell you, let me tell you the truth. Jesus said this. Let me, let me give you a, a secret. Jesus said this. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. He said, I'll go and prepare a place for you. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. The father's house is a present thing and a future thing. The father's house is a present thing and a future thing. The Father's house is not just when you go to heaven. You have to learn how to live from the Father's house now. See, when you look in the Greek, when it talks about my father in my Father's house are many um, mansions, that word mansions means abiding places. That's a revelation of the Lord that we like to call El Shaddai. El Shaddai means multi-breasted. It means multi-breasted. When you think about a baby, a baby that's breastfeeding, they're feeding for one breast. See, God has many dimensions you can live from. He's multi-breasted, which means that anything you need, you can draw from his breast and you can get what you need. Listen to me good. So we talk about in my father's house being many mansions. It means that God has many areas that you can live out of at one time. If you need a revelation of God as a healer, then drink from the breast. If you need a revelation of God as a heal, as a provider, drink from the breast. If you need God revelation of God as a deliverer, you can drink from the breast. If you need God as a revelation of a provider, you can drink from the breast. If you need a revelation of God as a comforter, you can drink from the breast. Whatever you need in his father's house or many mansions. See, what happens is we trust in our own ability, we trust in our own flesh, but we don't learn how to live from our Father's house and with our many mansions. God wants us to live a relationship, live a relationship, we know him as El Shaddai. And we come into the revelation of God being El Shaddai, we begin to drink from that breast. We begin to drink from those breasts. Now, what happens is a lot of us do not experience prosperity or the grace of God because we trust in our ability. Forget about what college you went to. Forget about what degrees you have. Forget about who your family is. Forget about your skin color. Forget about just black pride. Forget about um, white supremacy. Forget about all that stuff. You need to be converted like a little child and learn to trust in Jesus. Your pride hinders you from accessing the grace of God. God resists the proud. So the reason that some of you feel like stuff is not progressing, God is resisting you because of your pride. Pride causes resistance. Humility creates access. Pride causes resistance. 
Humility creates access. The reason God resists those who are in pride so they can realize how much they need him. The reason God gives access to those in humility is so he can get glory. The reason God resists those who are in pride is so they can realize how much they need him. The reason that God gives access to those in humility is so they can, um, they can give him glory. See, those who are in humility, they're not trying to touch God's glory. Humble people, they're not trying to touch God's glory. What do I mean by that? Prideful people, they're going to say what they did, how they got here. Every, they're not going to give credit to God. They're going to talk about what they did. I did this. I did that. I did that. I did that. That's why I'm here. That person won't go far. God did this. God did that. I yielded and God did this. That person, God will take far because God wants glory. Prideful people will touch the glory of God. They won't give God glory. It's all about them. Look what I did. I did this. I did that. I did that. I did this. I did that. That's why some people don't progress. It's all about them. And when it's all about you, you frustrate the grace of God. God is unauthorized. He's limited himself to his word. God is unauthorized to release grace to those who don't, who don't feel like they need him. Why would God help you when you feel like you're God? See, pride is when you think you're, you're God. When you're in pride, you have a false sense of Godhood. Why would God help you in your situation when you think you're him? Why would God help you when you're trying to do what he can do? Why would he do it? Why would God help you get a job when you feel like you can get a job yourself? You're based on getting a job on your resume. You're based on getting a job on your education. You're based on getting a job on who you know. Ask Cordell. I said, Cordell, hey, go down there and apply at this place. Cordell didn't know a person. He went off a seed he sold and, and divine instructions. Cordell went down there and got a job. If he had based it on who he knew, hey, my best friend, no, no, no. God don't get glory off that unless that best friend is a believer. And, that, that you know, then God can get glory. But God tends to move where he can get the most glory. But because of people's lack of pride, God won't move for them a lot. Because they, they lack pride. They, they're, they're, um, because people's lack of humility, God will move for them a lot. But let's let's change it. Let, let's, let's talk about grace-based life. Verse 7. It says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. If you want to live a blessed life, you must live a life where you trust in the Lord. Trust God for you not to be robbed. Don't trust your gun. Trust God for you not to be um, in an accident, not your job ability. Trust God for you to be provided for, not your human strength. Trust God for you to have the right mate, not your own wisdom. Trust God for those things. The Bible says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. When you trust in the Lord, God will empower you to succeed. When you trust in the Lord and humble yourself, God will empower you to succeed. Trust God to get into college. Trust God for the right scholarship. Trust God for those things. When you trust God, you're going to be blessed. Humility releases grace. But this person is blessed that trust in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. Listen, your hope has to be the Lord. We, we, we get a secret in um, Romans chapter 5, verse 5, hope in God does not disappoint. If you're disappointed, it's because you are not hoping in God. Listen to me good. If you're disappointed, it's because you're not hoping in God. Go back over all your disappointments. And if you look at the course of your disappointments, it's because you weren't hoping in God. Hope in God does not disappoint. See, even as it relates to jobs, I tell people, if you're applying for a job, don't put hope in the interview that that's the job. No, no, no. Make God your source. If God is the source of my employment, if God is the source of my promotion, you calling me is just a channel that God could work through. But I'm not hoping in the job. I'm hoping in God. See, if a person tells me, somebody tells me right now, people do it all the time. Somebody tells me right now, say, hey, God told me to give you $400. God told me, okay, well, God said that. Watch this. Hope in God and not them. There are times where I've hoped in people, but people are fickle. Like right now, there are people, they follow me based on when they like me. When they don't like me, they unfollow me. Some people are attention seekers. You don't give them the attention they want, they'll unfollow you and come right back. That's how people are. So I don't trust people. I don't trust people unless God tells me to. That's just what people do. People disappear. People follow you for convenience. People follow you based on what you can offer them. People blah, blah, blah. But listen, you got to trust in God. My hope is in God. Hope is a confident expectation of good things happening. Listen, hope is not positivity. Positivity is, you know, positivity, you know, it's different. It, it, listen to me good. Hope is a conviction that God's going to be good to you. Hope is a conviction that God's going to be good to you because of who he is. 
Hope is a conviction that God's going to be good to you because of who he is. That's what hope is. Watch this. So you're blessed if you trust in the Lord. And you're blessed if your hope is in the Lord. Your hope has to be in the Lord. You have to have a confident expectation that God's going to be good to you. You have to have a confident expectation that God's going to be good to you. I know, right? You have a confident expectation that God's going to be good to you. Confident expectation. You got to be confident that God's going to be good to you. Watch this. When you're confident that God's going to be good to you, and when you're trusting in the Lord, this is your experience in life. You're going to be like a tree that's planted by the waters. So watch this. We're talking about access and grace because I'm going to get more into it. It says he should be like a tree planted by the waters. What's going on, Courtney? Many. And that spread it out her root by the river and shall not see when heat cometh. But her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So when you talk about trusting in the Lord, you'll be like a tree planted by waters. If you want sustenance, you want growth, you want to go from faith to faith and glory to glory, you got to trust in the Lord. You got to have a confident expectation God's good to you. Let me tell you a promise that God told me. I was at my lowest point in life. I was at my lowest point in life. Lowest point. I was homeless. No help from really no people. And I was in prayer. This is what the Lord told me. He said this. And it changed my life. This is what I live out of. He told me, he told me two things. He said, number one. He said, when your mother and your father forsake you, I'll take care of you. He said, when your mother and your father forsake you, I'll take care of you. Number two, this is what he told me this. He said this. This is what he told me. He said, you shall see goodness in the land of the living. He said, I swear by myself, you shall see goodness in the land of the living. My hope is that number one, God's going to take care of me. Number two, my hope. Is that I'm going to see good things while I'm alive. I'm not going to have to die and, and miss out on good things. The God promised me by him. He said, I swear by myself that you're going to see goodness in the land of the living. That changed my life. So if my hope is in God, I'll never be disappointed. The Bible says hope in God does not disappoint. You got to have hope in God because hope in God does not disappoint. The reason a lot of us are so disappointed because we don't hope in God. We hope in everything but God, but we're not, we, you know, we hope in everything but God, but hope in God is the only hope that you'll never be disappointed. I can never be disappointed if I expect God to be good to me. I can never be disappointed if I expect God to be good to me. Let's keep going. Let's go to, uh, we're going to go to, um, Romans chapter five. Romans chapter 5. Is it helping anybody so far? Is it helping you so far? What's going on, Shoma? Romans chapter 5. Is it helping anybody so far? Right, let me show you something. Let me show you how it goes. What's going on? Glory to God. Glory to God. Is it helping you, Amanda? What about you, Jakaya? Is it helping you, Jakaya? Talk to me. Romans chapter 5. All right, Romans chapter 5. We're going to go to verse... Um, I'm trying to think of this to be... No, I won't go here. Let me give me one second. I want to talk about something because I may because if I keep doing the series, I may have to give a whole series to that. Let me show you. Let's go to the Hebrew chapter five because we're talking about access and grace. We said there. Listen to me. There are two keys to access and grace. There are two keys to access and grace. Number one, the first key is humility. Number two, the second key is prayer. Prayer and humility are the keys to access and grace. Prayer and humility. I want to show you something. All right, we're going to uh, Hebrews chapter five. We're going to go to verse five. Hebrews chapter five, verse five. You're supposed to trust God and love people. Trust God and love people. Watch this, verse 5, it says, So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, 
But then he said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he said in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Watch this. This is a key of humility. Look at Jesus. You're not better than Jesus. Now watch this. Verse 7. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears, unto him that was able to save him from death, was heard in that he feared. This is a key of humility. When Jesus lived in the flesh, he offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. See, one of the things you got to learn about prayer, and I talk to people about this all the time. It offends people sometimes. Let's be 100. I'm, I'm going to be honest. In prayer, you need to develop a cry. In prayer, you need to develop a cry. There should be a place in prayer where you learn how to cry out. You can never have a deeper prayer than your cry. Listen to me good. I just didn't flip the camera. You can never have a, a deeper depth in prayer than your cry. A lot of us have not learned how to cry out. David said, he said, his Bible says, God hears the cries of the righteous. There's a place in prayer where you learn how to cry out. Listen, David said this. He said, I cried unto the Lord out of the miry clay. He lifted me up and set me on the rock. There's a place where you need to cry. Some of you never get deliverance because you don't cry. And I'm not talking about tears, baby. I'm talking about a place from brokenness. I'm talking about crying out to God as if your life depended on it. I'm talking about approaching God as if if he don't touch it then, then you'll never be the same. I'm talking about approaching God with a, with a, a hunger and a thirst. The, sometimes the reason your life is on pause, you're not hungry enough. Some of you are not hungry enough for change. So because you're not hungry enough for change, you're going to stay the same way. I'm talking about a brokenness. I'm talking about crying out to God. I'm talking about as if uh, you're in a, uh, as if. So you just got a call that somebody's somebody you love is in a car accident. We're talking about that kind of cry. See, a lot of us don't know how to approach God with a cry. We casually approach God. Baby, the Bible says if you come before his throne, the Bible says come before his throne boldly to find grace and mercy in time of need. See, listen to me. If I'm approaching God based on my need, there's an emotion behind it. See, some of us, we, we say we're praying, but we're really talking to ourselves because there's not a cry. There's not a brokenness. There's not a humility. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avail of much. Baby, there should be a place in prayer. Not all the time, but I'm saying there should be a cry to God. When you really need God, there should be a cry. There should be a fervency. There should be a fervency and effectualness. The Bible said the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail of much. There should be a, a point in prayer. Baby, you're trying to affect something. You're trying to shake the heavens. You're trying to shake whatever is, is hindering you. You're trying to get a mountain to move. There should be a point in prayer where you should have that mountain to move and mountain shaking prayer. That place in prayer where you realize a mountain is in front of you and you're not going to stop crying out until you get out of prayer and you know that that mountain is to move. And the back in the days, they used to call it praying through. Am I right about it? When the last time that you prayed through? When the last time you was in prayer and a mountain was in front of you and you prayed until you knew of a surety that mountain was gone. How many times you talk to God three or four seconds and act like that's something? Baby, please. We talked about getting to a depth in God where you pray and a mountain move. We talked about a depth in God where faith from God dropped in your heart. And when faith dropped in your heart, you came out with authority and a power and you addressed something. See, some of us, we live so far beneath what God wants to do in our lives. We live so far beneath our heritage in Christ. Am I right about it? And, and, and we're saying, God, why are you taking so long? You're not hungry enough. You said, God, why are you taking so long? You're not hungry enough. Am I right about it? The old adage, they say, whatever you bow to earth will be bound in heaven. <laughs> whatever you loose to earth will be loosed in heaven. What does that mean? Baby, listen, as long as you tolerate it, it's going to be there. <laughs> I said, as long as you tolerate it, it's going to be there. Some of you are tolerating not having a job too long. If you're going to tolerate it, it's going to be there. Some of you are tolerating not going to the next level too long. Listen, if you listen to me good. If you listen, if you bind it, if you listen, if you permit it, it's going to be permitted. God says you back that. Hey, you like it that way. It can be that way. No, nah, baby, you better cry out, cry with a passion and a hunger like you need God. Am I right about it? And when you cry, baby, there's a change that'll happen. Whatever you tolerate, it'll never change. Listen to me. Good. Whatever you whatever you tolerate, it will never change. Some of you tolerating too much mess in your life. I feel God. I said some of you tolerating too much mess in your life. You're tolerating being in that position. Baby, you're tolerating the things that are happening to you. You're not crying out. And, and you believe the seed alone is going to get a change. The seed, that's a principle to the seed. Absolutely. What about a cry, though? Am I right about it? What about a cry? What about a cry? Do you cry out in prayer? I said, do you cry out in prayer? Do you cry? When the last time you cried out? 
When the last time you approached God, like if you don't touch this now, I'll never be the same. When the last time you cried out as if God, if you don't affect this situation, I can't take it no more. What about that emotion? Am I right about it? David said, I, I poured out my complaint before God. The Bible says, do all things that I'm already complaining. But he didn't say don't complain in prayer. Baby, the Bible says, David said, I poured out my complaint. There's some times that I poured out complaints to God. God changed it immediately. I remember one of my friends was being afflicted by her mom, just wrongfully done. And I began to talk to God, and I began to complain to God. I began to say, God, this is not right. I began to say, God, how, how can you affect Pharaoh's heart, but you not touch this woman's, her mama's heart? I said, come on now. How can, what's, what, what's up with this? I began to pour out my heart as a, as a child talks to their father. And I'm telling you, man, God can affect that situation in the middle of the situation, in the middle of prayer. God affected her mother's heart and she, her mother began to cry and apologize because of the move of God. See, some of us are not tapping into that vein in prayer. We don't cry out like that. Baby, you better learn to cry. Cry out. And my, I cried unto the Lord and he heard me. Baby, that's a t I'm t man, you got to learn how to leave stuff at the altar. What about the altar? What, that's something that we lost. <laughs> We lost the altar. What about crying out? Now, we, listen, you, can't, you ain't going to go far in God being passive. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven itself is violence. And the violent take it by force. If you want anything for God, maybe you got to take it back. The devil not finna give up what's yours easily. <laughs> you think you're going to get a job easy? You think you're going to progress in life easy? You think so? No, no, it don't work that way. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven itself is violence. And the violent takes it by force. Whatever is yours, you got to take it by force. You got to realize this is illegal and I'm no longer going to tolerate this. You know, think about this. I, I want you to imagine yourself as a madman. I'm in my room and Cordell is in that living room. If I got tired of Cordell and I had a gun, what would I do? I will get my gun and I'll start shooting up this house. <laughs> and if I shoot up this house, that man will run out the door. Some of you, the reason the devil is still in your house, you won't, you won't use your authority. You won't use your power. He in another room. <laughs> He's just not in your room, but he in another room. Use your power. Use your authority. Lift up your voice. Cry out unto God in, in the heavens. Am I right about it? And when, when the devil realizes that you ain't going to tolerate this no more, he'll move. As long as you can tolerate it. Listen, I, got, I always tell Cordell when it comes to a job. I tell people all the time about jobs. Listen to me good. It can be God can put on somebody's heart to call you for a job and they can forget. They can forget. <laughs> But if you're passive about a job and you have a mindset of, I'm just going to wait till things come, you'll never get anything. If you're going to get some, you got to take it or educate yourself about what's necessary to get it and then take the action steps. And you'll find out, like Abraham Lincoln said, I mean, um, Frederick Douglass said, he said, I prayed for, he said, I prayed for 10 years and nothing happened. He said, then I added some legs to my prayer. Am I right about it? He said, I prayed for 10 years and nothing happened. He said, then I added some legs to my prayer. Some of you pray with legs, right? I said, pray with legs. Don't just pray. Pray with legs. And listen, after you come out of prayer, use your legs. Use your legs. Am I right about it? See, I believe God wants to speak to the people on here. <laughs> God wants to search the people up. Pray with legs. So look, I'm going to stop here. We, talk, we, we talked about grace and basic living. I pray it stirred you up. I pray it stirred you up. Listen to me good. So look, if you don't, if you like the way I teach, go to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have about, I have over a hundred videos on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have so many videos on a, a, a multitude of topics. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, um, glory to God, Aaron, for those who um, want to attend the School of the Prophets, it was session six today. If you're trying to attend the School of the Prophets, go to Darnell Craig and register for the School of the Prophets. Thank you so much, Amanda. I registered for the School of the Prophets, and um, it's two dollars. It's uh, no, no, it's ten dollars a class, eight classes a month, um, eighty dollars, eighty dollars for the whole month. So it's it's ten dollars a class, eight classes a month, eighty dollars a month. So they they upload it every Monday and Wednesday. Every Monday and Wednesday, the School of the Prophets. We're in session six, session six. So for those who want to attend the School of the Prophets, go online register. They upload it on my website every Monday and every Wednesday. Also, this as well. For those who um, want to become partners, if you feel like the ministry has been a blessing to your life, you want to become a partner, you want to help, you want to help support the vision, then go to DarnellCraig.com, become a partner. There's an amount you can purpose to give every month as a commitment to helping further the work of ministry and also um, yeah, to help partner me in ministry. How this works is this. If you become a partner, 
God automatically will increase your finances. If you have a business, God will bless your business. And also you get a reward, a prophet's reward, because you receive me in the name of a prophet. The Bible says that um, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. A prophet's reward is the desire of your heart. Whatever the, is the foremost major desire of your heart, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, God will give you the desires of your heart. A prophet's reward is the desire of your heart and everything that prophet has access to. So listen to me good. If you want to become a partner, go through those amounts. See whatever amount God puts in your heart to give, and you become a partner. And if you become a partner, you have someone that's praying for you, someone that's lifting you up in prayer, someone that's believing God's, believing God for testimony that prays over the seed, believing that you'll experience God's best, God's finest, and His highest. And also, um, if you don't follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter at underscore all caps, T-O-A-U-M. Underscore all caps, T-O-A-U-M. So I'm going to get off here. God bless you. I pray that it encouraged you. If you if you feel led to sow, you want to sow to be a blessing to me or um, a blessing to the ministry, you can just donate as well. Go to DarnellCraig.com. You can donate. If you want to become a partner, go to DarnellCraig.com. On the, home, on the home page, at the bottom of the page, you'll see donate. God bless you too, Josh. And God bless you too, Ms. Peaches. And also, um, if you want to attend the School of the Prophets, you go to School of the Prophets, you register, and you can attend. So God bless you. I pray this encourages you. I pray it opens your eyes. And uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, then. Bye-bye. Salute you too, Brian.